Good morning and welcome to church. This is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. And the church said, Amen. My name is Jeremy Grenhart, and I have the pleasure of serving as music director at Christ Lutheran in Bethesda, Maryland. But for our online services, I'm also your host, along with my co-host of St. Cecilia, the patron saintess of music. And we're coming to you as usual, live and direct from our living room in Philadelphia, and just taking a moment to welcome everyone into this space. If you're a friend of ours and you've been along this Lenten journey, or indeed a much longer journey with us, it's great to see you and we welcome you back. And if you're new to this ch whole church thing, maybe somebody forwarded you the link or you're stumbling across this on social media, we just wanna let you know that you are also most welcome in this space. Everyone is welcome. There are no exceptions, amen. Well, the way we usually begin our service is with a time of confession and forgiveness, uh, but during Lent, uh, I'm going to invite us into a practice. Usually for Lent, people think about giving something up. So as usual, I'm going to do the exact opposite and invite you to think about something that you'd like to add to your life in this Lenten journey. Maybe it's a time of prayer or meditation. Maybe it's uh, something healthy in your diet or there's a book that you've been meaning to read and just haven't got around to it. Um, this is a time when we can be intentional about setting that, uh, setting that goal for ourselves. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it down because uh, I forget things easily. And I'm going to pop it in my little Reardon, uh, Reardon Steel mug. And then I'm going to look at it again during Holy Week just to see how I did. So let's take a moment uh, to set this intention together. And as we come back together, we know that we serve a God who hears our prayers as they are prayed in his son's holy name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, well, let's not waste any time. Let's get right into the word. Here we go. A reading from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Amen. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lalitha John. I am a member of Christ Lutheran, and I'm also serving on our church council. Today's reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 8 through 14. Here begins the reading. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. As you try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord, do not participate in the useless deeds of darkness, but instead even expose them for it is disgraceful even to speak of the things which are done by them in secret. But all things become visible when they are exposed by the light, for everything that becomes visible is the light. For this reason it says, Awake, sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine in you. Here ends the reading. Hello. I'm Pastor Lou Schutze, happy to be with Christ Lutheran again for worship and take part in this. I've asked my wife, Nancy, to read the gospel because it's a lengthy gospel, one of those marathon stories in John's gospel, uh, which has a richness in it that the reading really needs to bring out the richness of it. But as you, as you hear all the interactions between the man born blind 
and those around him. Uh, ask yourself this question, what's missing here? The Gospel of John, the ninth chapter, the entire chapter, verses one to 41. As he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, It is not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be made manifest in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night comes when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. As he said this, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle and anointed the man's eyes with the clay, saying, Go wash in the pool of Salome, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar said, is not this the man who used to be sit and beg? Some said, it is he. Others said, no, but he is like him. He said, I am the man. They said to him, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, go to Salome and wash. So I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought him to the Pharisees. They brought to the Pharisees, the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. The Pharisees again asked him, how he had received his sight. He said to them, he put clay on my eyes and I washed and I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner do such signs? There was a division among them. So they again said to the blind man, what do you say about him since he has opened your eyes. He said, he is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and that he had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had, been, who had received his sight and asked them, is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see the parents answered, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but how he now sees, we do not know, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone should confess him to be Christ, he was to be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind and said to him, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, whither he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you too want to become his disciples? And they reviled him saying, you are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, why, this is a marvel. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, 
But if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, you were born in utter sin, and would you teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and having found him, he said, do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, and who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, you have seen him, and it is he who speaks to you. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. Jesus said, for judgment I came into this world, that those who do not see may see, and that those who see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this, and they said to him, Are we also blind? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no guilt. But now that you say we see, your guilt remains. The end of the gospel. So, what's missing? Here's a man blind from birth who has never known anything but darkness, who has been driven to begging in order to survive, who has become virtually invisible to all around him. Here's a man who has miraculously received his sight given him expect unexpectedly as a gift. And what a gift. So what's missing? Do you feel it? Search as you might. In this account, you will not find it. There is no joy. There's no joy, no rejoicing, no grand celebration, not even a whisper of excitement, none. Why is that? When it is everyone else who has, could it be that everyone else has other things on their mind? Things, other things to pursue, other things to protect. See, for the disciples, oh, the disciples, the church, as it were, for the disciples, this is a real curiosity. It's a theological conundrum. Imagine a man born blind. That ought to be grist for a, a good theological bull session. If sin and suffering are connected as we have been taught that they are, then who sinned? This man or his parents that he was born blind. That ought to make for a lively discussion. Good topic for tonight's session. To the neighbors. To the neighbors, this man has become invisible already, a non entity. He's not a man at all. To them, he's the blind beggar who has become a fixture in their community. Now that he can, can see, there's, there's real confusion. Is this the one, or is it a look-alike? He says to their indifference and confusion, I am the man. And to the Pharisees, the Pharisees, the super-religious folk, go into a total meltdown. They stage an inquisition. Can you imagine? 
does this seem like the right time for an inquisition? An inquisition against the healer, against the parents, then against the one who just was given the gift of a lifetime, the sight. They, they gather around him, they, they berate him. You were born in utter sin. And would you teach us? Wow. Plenty of anger. But there's no joy. With all this maelstrom of anger and confusion surrounding him, there's no joy. Do you know what that's like? We get to be on the outside of this story looking in, but do you know what it's like being on the inside? In a joyful occasion, to be in a joyful occasion when, when you don't share the joy. There's something going on inside you. Something to pursue, something to protect, something that preempts the joy you might otherwise feel. What would it be? What would it be that makes you such a killjoy? Maybe it's envy or resentment. Maybe it's fear, maybe it's jealousy. Whatever it is, the joyful occasion for, for someone becomes an occasion for judgment on you. I came into the world for judgment, says Jesus, so that those who do not see may see, and those who see may become blind. It's like the old saying immortalized in a song, there are none so blind as those who will not see. That's a self-imposed judgment. You bring it upon yourself. You rob yourself of sharing someone else's joy. The Apostle Paul serves up the imperative for the people of God. Re weep with those who weep. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Now, I always used to think the second part of that was easier. What a cinch that is. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Very simple, very easy. Let's party. But now I wonder. You can feel another's grief because it touches your own. But what about their joy? There's a lot that can get in the way. So what's missing? It's shocking. It's shocking, but there is no joy here. There's only so much that can get in the way. There's so much that can get in the way, so much self-imposed judgment that you that can rob us of of that experience. In John's Gospel, John's Gospel is always judgment is always something present. It always it's always a failure to be in the moment. 
It's a failure to be open to God in the occasion. It's a failure to receive the gift that is offered. Jesus, the living word, came to his own, came into the world full of grace and truth. He came to his own home, but his own people received him not. Christ, the light, came into the world, but, but people loved darkness rather than light. Christ, the resurrection and the life, comes bringing vitality and new possibilities. The raising of, but the raising of Lazarus prompts only a conspiracy to put the life giver to death. There's no joy. The gift is not received. So it goes in John's Gospel. Jesus comes bringing judgment, judgment that is immediate and self-imposed. The Pharisees, the religious folk, say derisively, surely we are not blind, are we? But put just a touch of disarming self-awareness in there and it comes out sounding different. Surely, we are not blind, are we? The judgment comes home to good effect. Well, maybe we are. Too often, too often callous, indifferent, too often mired down in our own religious dogma. Too little in the moment so that we miss the wonders at hand. We miss the gracious gifts poured out. Miracles in our midst. Surely we are not blind. Are we? Amen. Amen and amen. Well, let's do this. Let's sing a little bit, and then Taylor is going to move us into the prayers of the people. Here we go.
Good morning. Thank you for joining our service today. My name is Taylor and I serve as one of the worship leaders here at Christ Lutheran. And I invite you into this special time of our prayers of the people. This is a special time during our service in which we bring the celebrations and the concerns of our hearts and minds to God. In your space, I invite you to take a position of prayer that best suits you best. So well, that could be sitting, that could be standing, that could be eyes opened, snuggled in a blanket, holding hands with a loved one, whatever allows you in this time to quiet your mind and allow you to connect with God during this time. For our world, as we continue to see injustice and violence in our world, Lord, we ask the strength to overcome the evil and temptations that exist among nations. Creator of all living things, we pray for great mercy toward all your children. Guide our worldly leaders to be selfless, compassionate, and diplomatic in their decision making. Influence their hearts to consider those who are marginalized and discriminated against, such as refugees forced to leave your homes or any of that that are subject to the grave sin of genocide. Protect your children all over the world. Create policies to fight the ways injustice appears in our world. And Lord, we just want to specifically address the situation between Russia and Ukraine. Keep your hand on their hearts and be the voice in their ears, spreading peace and wisdom and more unity throughout their nations. Lord, we also pray for the lives lost due to the tragic tra train crash in Greece this week. Cover and comfort families as they mourn friends and family lost due to this devastating event. Lord, in your mercy, hear our song. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Come and listen to me. For our community. Lord, we pray for the needs of our community. O oh God, provider of life and source of every blessing, find the holes in our community which might cause those to go, those in need to go without help. We pray for those who are isolated and may have gone without human touch or interaction. We pray for the homeless, the poor, and those who go hungry. Allow resources to go to entities and organizations that exist to help others. Let your Holy Spirit fill our hearts so that we might give more of our time and provision so others may be blessed. Lord, we thank you for the reassurance in a fearful, anxious world that we are all welcome at your table. This perfect peace that you provide is open to each and every one of us, an example of your love. Help us to have a crowded table where fa friends, family, or strangers, those who may be different from us, are welcome in our communities. May those seeds we sow further your vision and to grow mightily in fellowship and communion with one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our song. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Come and listen to me. For our church, Lord, we pray for you to lead us along your path according to your will. Lend us a time for us to focus on your plan and vision that you have for us for our lives. Order our steps in this journey with you and allow us to bring people along with us. Help us to be good listeners. Teach us to be listeners of your word, of each other, music, those whom we agree and those whom which we disagree. Grow in us virtues of empathy and understanding and through the discipline of active listening. Drown out the noise of anything that is not of you in Jesus' name. We are blessed to have the means to connect with each other through this virtual worship experience. Continue to grow the ways in which we make disciples. We thank you for our readers today. 
We thank you for our pastor for his message today. Our organizers, editors, musicians, and those who share our service with family and friends, and all others who put forth a labor of love to bring our virtual worship experience to more homes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our song. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Come and listen to me. Lord, we thank you that we are lovingly created in your image. We sometimes make decisions that turn us away from you when we are scared, doubtful, or angry, and a variety of different emotions, feelings that maybe cause us to forget that we are your children. And even when we make those choices, your unwavering love still welcomes us back in. Oh God, we pray in gratefulness for your relentless pursuit of our hearts. During this Lent season, when we reflect on those ways which we have turned our backs against you, cleanse us of shame from our sins that try to keep us captive. Let us be reminded that Jesus paid the ultimate price for our salvation. Bring us closer to you, Lord Jesus. Lord. Turn our fear into courage, sadness into joy, despair into hope in Jesus' name. We pray for those who are recovering from illness or injury. May God's healing power cover you and allow for a full recovery of bill and of health. We pray specifically for Marjorie, who is recovering in the hospital, and we hope that the resources and time necessary are provided so that she can have a full um, bill of health and recovery. We now open up the virtual spiritual space to the prayers of people. Please feel free to take up this moment to offer any prayers you might have, either loud or silently, to God. During this moment, I want to pray specifically um, as we mourn the loss of a jazz great, Wayne Shorter. Um, he was a visionary, an arranger, an amazing musician. Um, he has shaped jazz to be, or one of the pioneers of shaping jazz to be what it is today. Um, me personally was inspired by him as I discovered him in college. Uh, we just pray for his life and his work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our song. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Oh Lord, hear my prayer. Come. We place all of these prayers, the ones we haven't prayed yet, and the silent meditations that hang out on our hearts. And we pray in Jesus' holy name and the words that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, now and forever, let the church say, Amen. Amen. Thanks, Ms. Taylor. Well, as always, if you have prayer requests, don't hesitate to be in touch. You can leave a comment below. Be in touch with me directly or anyone on the Cool Council. We would love to be praying for you. And our ministry does require your support. So as you're so inclined, please go to our website when you have a minute. It's uh, ChristLutheranBethesda.org, and there you can both give to the ministry and keep up to date with our in-person worship schedule. All right, let's sing one more time before we end our service. i
Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.